beautiful light all around us. We take it for granted. It is at our command whenever and wherever we may need it. And it allows us to do whatever we need or wish to do with light sources of every variety. But this isn't the case for most of the people in the world. In the developing world, more than two billion people go through their entire lives without reliable electricity or any electricity at all, which makes access to light a daily challenge that brings with it a host of different consequences. John Bowers, director of UC Santa Barbara's Institute for Energy Efficiency and co-founder of Unite to Light addresses this challenge. The fundamental goal of Unite to Light is to improve the educational situation for children in poor countries in Africa. We take light for granted. It's ubiquitous. It's efficient, it's reliable, it's inexpensive. But for 1.4 billion people, they don't have access to electricity. They're not on the grid. And so they have to burn something, either candles or kerosene or dung or wood. We tend to neglect the fact that this is very unhealthy. Uh, kerosene is a good example. This is a US grade kerosene lamp. And uh, it puts out light. I can read by this. But the fumes I'm breathing are very unhealthy. And this is very bad for the Earth as we fill our skies full of these greenhouse gases. It's very expensive, typically about $6 a month for a single lamp in Africa. And it's very unsafe. If this gets knocked over, it causes a fire. And about a million people per year are injured by fires. The focus of Unite to Light is to get that technology to those who aren't accessing that. So in the United States, everybody can buy them. It's not a big deal. They're not that expensive. But to, to a family that earns a few dollars a day or a week or a year, then it's prohibitively expensive. And so Unite to Light was formed to get this technology, solar-powered lighting, to those who need it the most, and in particular, to enhance education. Unite to Light got started at the request of a, of a professor in Ghana, and he made the observation that those who come from the city in Accra, where it's electrified, do much better in college than those who come from the northern parts of the country, where 75% of the people don't have electricity. And so his goal for us was to get inexpensive light to those people that don't have lighting and improve the educational process. Because the problem is that during the day, kids may be at school, there's daylight during the day, and after school they do chores, they raise money for the family, and by the time it gets dark and there's time to actually study, they don't have that option. And so they're well behind those students in the electrified cities in their abilities to, to excel in college. And so a better solution is needed, one that is much less expensive than $200 a year because you know, families in Africa don't have that much money to devote to the luxury of reading in that case. So a very good solution is LED lights. LEDs are 10 times more efficient than incandescent light bulbs. And if you can combine LEDs with solar panels, then once you've bought one of these lights for equivalently about a month's worth of kerosene usage, then you can use that light for the next five, 10 years. This is the light that Unite to Light is distributing. Uh, it has a solar panel, it has a LED, and it has a battery. And the importance of the higher efficiency of the LED is very clear here, because if this were an incandescent light bulb, I would need a 10 times larger battery than a single AA battery. And I need a 10 times larger solar cell than this. So the efficiency of this light is very important to making this small, lightweight, and inexpensive. Unite to Light has been working throughout the developing world to help provide low-cost and dependable light sources. They are involved in 56 different countries, bringing light to over 33,000 people, children, women, families, families that can now spend money on food, not fuel, and children who can now spend time reading and learning. But it wasn't until a technical breakthrough made by another UC Santa Barbara scientist in 1993 that this dream of bringing a simple necessity to those without it could become reality. But how did this happen? Next time on Lighting the World, a journey to a brilliant discovery.